Hey folks, Fernando doing our video for the Mars Survivalist. As I always say, if you have any specific questions or video requests, leave me a comment below and I'll do my best to address it as soon as I can. Here I have a question from some name, that's his actual name. He says, hey brother, I haven't read your book, I'm about to buy it. That would be Street Survival Skills, it's available in Amazon, link below. But how does silver and gold historically work in an economic collapse? When countries like Argentina or Greece collapse, the outside world is still dealing trading precious metals. But what if if the United States or the whole world for that matter collapses. That's obviously never happened before but how is it that precious metals would act in that scenario? It's a good question and absolutely I'm gonna be going through that in further detail. Uh, a good starter would be actually a quote from my from my book and this is what I, uh, what I wrote down it says, gold and silver have been a form of currency for over 10,000 years. Even today, it is a well-established form of wealth that retains its value when fiat currencies collapse to pieces. It crumbled to pieces. This has happened before in nearly every country at one time or another and will happen again. And then I go on just to explain a few um, uh, ways of detecting counterfeit precious uh, metals, gold and silver, some of the most common tests, so as to know that you're not being uh, scammed with something that's not actual precious metal. But um, specifically about the question, well, you really have to look at the big picture. As I said in the book, it's over 10,000 years that gold and silver have been uh, recognized firm of wealth, of even used as, as currency. And what I always say is always look at what's happening in the real world. Look at Venezuela right now. Venezuela would be a perfect example. Right now, of course, they've gone through a terrible economic collapse. They're pretty much the, the fiat currency has pretty much no value. And what you have in Venezuela right now is people uh, diving into sewers. The, um, the city of Caracas basically has its sewers that end up in the Guaire River. And they're diving into that river, digging in the bottom, trying to find any piece of precious gold, uh, of precious metal, gold or, or silver. Because through the sewers, this is common in pretty much every every city, through the, through the sewers, any little necklace or earring or gold ring or silver ring, any kind of jewelry that ends up going through the drain ends up in, in the sewer in the bottom. And if you dig, you're likely to find some of these uh, there. The economic uh, situation being what it is, even a small silver earring means food for those people, means that you're going to be eating that week if you find anything of value. Even, you know, even copper is it's valuable there, but silver, gold, those are precious metals and it's never been as true as it is right now in Venezuela. Let's take a closer look, stick around for this video because I'm going to be explaining a few things that you definitely want to be aware of. So the story of Argentina is pretty much the story of the world. We are not all that different when you look at the big picture. This is one of the older Argentine pesos. Not that long ago I actually got to see and handle some of these uh, in, my, in my youth. Well, as you see this is a, a pretty typical note, not that different from your US dollar 50 buck bill. Uh, then it starts getting interesting. We start adding zeros as things get worse. As the currency keeps devaluating, uh, zeros keep on be getting added. And I remember this as a, as a child. All of a sudden, I was buying a, a, a piece of candy with a, a hundred thousand buck bill, right? And as you see, they, they kept on adding zeros and yet another zero. And then they said, okay, maybe we're adding two zeros, maybe a half a million buck bill is an indication that we're doing things wrong. So we start doing something else. We start with the Austral. The Austral was the, the new currency of Argentina back in the day. And I remember the Austral quite well. You had your Austral, you went with your Austral, it was, the parity was, an Austral was pretty much like a dollar. Well, yeah, not so much. As time goes by, you start having these. Right, these are the ones that you would originally use up until a hundred bucks. Um, that lasts for a little while, then you start using these ones, the, the thousand Austral bill, which this one was very popular. I, I remember this one quite well. And then the same old same happens. You have to start doing crazy math, removing zeros. And as a kid, it's it's strange because your parents tell you, well, it's the same. 
I was a kid, I was used to the US dollar. I lived in the United States as a kid, and even as a child, I always thought in terms of dollars. So my parents would give me money for buying something in school, you know, getting, getting uh, something to drink, a sandwich or something. And how much is this worth? Well, just, just remove these last four numbers. Those really, these four last zeros, those mean nothing. It's like 10 bucks, okay. And this was a lot of money back in the day <laughs> until it became nothing. And the perfect example of how this means nothing is the Zimbabwe 10 trillion, uh, 100 trillion dollar bill. Man, you're super rich. You have 100 trillion dollars. And you may be thinking, okay, this is funny money. Well, it happens in Weimar Republic as well. You know, these were burned because these weren't even uh, good for anything other than burning. And you have currencies that are more stable. You have your 50 US, 50 euro bill, which is a lot of money, you know, a lot of money, nice bill, all things considered, US dollar, sure, absolutely, at the end of the day, all of this, it's the same thing, it's just paper, and the only thing that has value is the trust, we think of economy as something cold, as something technical, it's always about trust, because all of this is just paper, the only thing that's not paper, is this little guy right here. This is silver. This is one mercury silver. 10 cents US. Beautiful coin. Now, why is this valuable and why has this been valuable for thousands of years? Because of this. Because history. Because history teaches us, look how freaking similar these two are 2,000 years apart. Think about the significance of that. Think about the enormity of that. How similar these two coins are. This is a denarius. This is what almost 2,000 years ago someone in Rome, uh, Caesar or some emperor decided this is the minimum wage we're gonna be paying to the professional soldier, the legionnaire. He's gonna be getting one of these a day. That's his salary. Salary comes from the world from, from salt. Sal. Salary used was paid in you know in, in commodities in salt and there's a lot of people in the survival community that still abide by that idea and I'm not saying that they're wrong by any means because I'm I'm nowhere near as um, as narrow-minded so as to think that I'm you know I'm right all along or that just a different opinion this is simply wrong no it's 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 a valid argument that this would be. Uh, a, a potential form of payment, like salt was back in the day, this could be used as payments. I'm paying you with a can of tuna. <laughs> that's your salary, or that's your tuna <laughs> Um Or some guys think that it's about bullets. Now the problem with these is you have basically uh, a form of currency that is perishable. It's gonna be going bad. That could be broken. This has lasted 2,000 years. It's still about three grams worth of silver, just as much as it was 2,000 years ago. This is not going to be lasting 2,000 years. Besides that, it just could be, it just could go bad. It's bulky, it's big, it's fragile, and it is narrow in its acceptance in terms of I can only give this to someone that wants food. And he could use it as a currency somewhat. It doesn't fulfill the criteria of currency because it's not stable, it's not um, homogenous in its, in its form. You know, it's a can full of fish. If something similar happens with, with bullets, and maybe even so, if you were going to be telling me that they're going to be trading or bartering with something, maybe this is going to be a, a more a precious form of barter. For example, in Venezuela right now, this is definitely a more precious fo form of barter in Venezuela than a, bo than, than a, a, a box of 9mm. Because honestly, for most people in Venezuela right now, they're thinking about eating. They're not thinking about bullets. Even though bullets are <laughs> pretty precious over there as well, and the ability to defend yourself as, as well is, is valuable. The idea that you're going to be going, and this is something that got popularized in, in some novels about survival, that you would be going, how much is that? Is it two bullets of 9mm? Okay, there you go, my friend. There you go. I, I just made my payment there. The problem with that is ammunition can also go bad. It's not not very common and rounds properly kept will last a hundred years maybe more the thing is it depends on the conditions this was kept if i kept this in my pocket and forgot it uh, in my jeans and it went into the, the washing machine like currency usually does then it could potentially go bad it could corrode it, it could 
just not work as it's supposed to. So it ends up becoming something symbolic if it doesn't work in a gun. Besides that, anyone that knows anything about guns will easily know that you can reload this without any powder inside and it's a dud. It's a round that's not going to be fired when you put in a gun and you fire it, there, there may be no powder in it. That would be a, a way of counterfeiting your, your ammo currency. So I'm really not a big believer in that idea. I just do not see it. I, just, I do not see it fly. What I believe in is history. What I believe in is facts. This is a fact. This is not a matter of opinion. Silver and gold have, have, has always been a form of wealth, form of value, and it is right now. As, as I was playing before, they're in, in Venezuela right now, they're diving into the sewers looking for any little piece of jewelry, any earring, any chain that went down the drain when someone took a shower washing their hands because that buys them food. If you have one of these in Venezuela, today you're eating. You know, think of that for a, a second. If you have one of these in Venezuela, you're going to be eating today, tomorrow, maybe the entire week. This is a lot of money right now in Venezuela. And you may be thinking, well, that's not a lot of money for me right now. Give me those 50 euros. That sounds quite nice, right? Well, the thing is this, guys. This is about 60, 60 bucks, 60 cents a gram. So that's like, you know, you have maybe two, three dollars here worth of actual silver, right? A couple of dollars at the very least, depending on who's buying it on the... Yes, you're not going to be buying a Mercury coin for less than that because it has an additional value because of its historic and the numismatic value of the coin. But easily two bucks, three bucks, absolutely. With those two, three bucks, you're going to be eating that day. And you have to keep in mind that as of right now, worldwide, there's nearly half the world. And yes, it's either that or like 40% of the world is living on less than this a day. They're very poor countries. You know, there's people in Venezuela, they're paid like this a month. <laughs> if you do the conversion to the US dollar, they're getting paid like two, three dollars a month in Venezuela. So this is a month's wages in Venezuela as of right now. The thing is that this is also a month's wages in Venezuela right now because a can of tuna is going to be going for one of, or two US dollars in Venezuela as of right this moment. But the point of this video is trying to answer this question. How is it that you would be using any of this? Well, you would be first acquiring your, your precious metals if you don't have them already. And one of the best ways of doing that is doing your research, know what works for you. What works well for you maybe does not work as well for me. If you're watching this in the United States, maybe a bag with a few coins, a few junk silver coins is a very good way to go. All of this is silver, 90% silver. Anything that is pre-1964, quarters, dimes, Pre-1964, it's going to be 90% silver. And this, in America, is a very well-recognized form of silver. It may be counterfeited as well. Be careful about that. And that's some of the stuff I wrote about in, in my latest book. Because that's important. Because there are counterfeit pre-64 quarters, U.S. quarters, floating around in the market as well. Uh, usually, they're magnetic, so they're easily detected. But you have to know your thing. You have to know what to look for. Now, this is silver and it's going to be valuable wherever it is that you are. No matter where I am, if I walk into a store and asking about how is it that you will be using that, I will be using it that way. If I'm in Argentina right now and I need money, I need a few bucks, I go with my coins to a dealer and I go, okay, you know, a jewelry store. Usually they're going to be looking for, for gold, you know, they're more used. They're not used to seeing silver like this. Maybe uh, some, uh, you know, uh, a few silver eagles. That sort of thing is more, is more of the, the kind of stuff that they're used to. But it's still precious metal. If I go with a, a silver Morgan, right? If I go to a, if I go to a numismatic store in Argentina, I need money. I go to a numismatic silver store in Argentina, and I'm gonna be selling these. I'm gonna be probably getting more than their precious metal contents. But they're not going to be giving me any less than the silver content in it. That's for sure. So that's why you want to buy these for as close to the spot price as possible. So as close to the price of the actual silver content as possible. Now, this is something that translates to different countries. The different countries have different forms. This is all US, US money. This one is 
from France, 1875. <laughs> and they had these until rather recently. They had until, I think in the, the 60s or 70s, they had large silver coins in France. This is a very valid way to keep precious metals for someone in France or someone in Europe in general. But at the same time, no matter where you are, even if you are in the United States, if you go with this coin, probably it's going to be having a little bit of an interesting numismatic value. Again, any less than the silver con content? Nope. You're not going to be giving it up for any less than that. Now, you were asking about what if the United States collapses. Well, the United States collapsing, it would be a pretty big deal. No question about that. It wouldn't be the end of the world, though. And history teaches us this. History teaches us that 2,000 years ago, this was still worth the same. And it's not going to be changing no matter what happens. As long as there's humans, as long as there are people, there's certain things that we've already accepted as a, as a species that has value. Silver and gold would be one of those. And it doesn't, you know, it depends on where you are. There's different countries that have different, uh, different histories and they know their own currencies well. This would be an example of silver in Switzerland. These are still, you, know, you have to love the Swiss, these are still their coins. This is still currency in Switzerland. This is 1954, 1932, and it still has its face value. It's still five francs of silver. What can you say about that? Those guys, they, they the Swiss, you just have to give it to them. They know what they're doing. Usually they do. <laughs> so yeah, this is still, and again, Look at the similarity. Last, last little thing. What is this made in? 19... I have some of these that are very old, like from 18-something. I find one. But look at the similarity. This, this, and these. Silver. It's one of the ways in which you are assuring yourself that no matter what happens, no matter if the US dollar becomes just paper, if you have actual silver, you still have money. You still have something that you're going to be trading for food, anything that you actually need. That's, that's going to be accepted by someone. There's going to be some nutcase thinking, oh, no, I'm going to be keeping my... my <laughs> I, I remember one conversation, a little debate with someone. Hey, when someone comes with a bar of gold, I'm going to be trading him one egg from my hand for a bar of gold. No, you're going to be doing that because he's going to be finding someone reasonable that's going to be giving him a fair price for, for his money. Okay, so the market is not dictated by the individual, but, but by the collective consciousness of what is valuable and what is not. And silver has kept, silver and gold have both kept its, its value quite well throughout history. Guys, it's going to be all for now. Subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video. Have an awesome day.